So today is the very auspicious appearance day of Ramanujacharya. Ramanujacharya ki jai. He appeared 1,007 years ago. He is the leader of the Sri Sampradaya in which they worship Narayan as supreme. There's actually a nice uh, pastime of Lord Chaitanya and a devotee named Vyankatapat who uh, was a uh, follower of the Sri Sampradaya. Now they're, you know, we're in the same family, you know, Narayan and Krishna, they're uh, the same in one sense, or Chinchi Beta Beta Tattva. So Lord Chaitanya was staying with him, and Lord Chaitanya was very fond of uh, Vyankatapat Prabhu. And they would joke and, and have, have a good time. And at one point, Lord Chaitanya said, your Lakshmi doesn't appear to be very chaste because she wanted to associate with Krishna, but she's the consort of Narayan. And Vyankatabhat said, no, there's no difference between Krishna and Narayan, so there's no uh, lack of chastity there. They're the same. And Lord Chaitanya accepted that. But then he said, well, why is it that Lakshmi Devi, she wanted to uh, be in the association of Krishna in the rasa dance, but she couldn't enter. She actually performed a great austerity to enter into the rasa dance with Krishna, but she wasn't able to enter. And Vyankatabhat said, my Lord, I, this is above me. I don't know. <laughs> then Lord Chaitanya explained, because she didn't want to give up her uh, Lakshmi Devi form, goddess of fortune. But to enter into the rasa dance, one has to have this the form, a gopi. So she didn't want to to do that. So therefore she wasn't able to enter into the rasa dance. So when he was in uh, Gurukul, the teacher, Yadava Prakash was very impressed with his brilliance. He would hear anything once and that was enough. He didn't have to hear it. He, he was you know, very bright you know, brighter than your I was IIT you have here? Yeah. IIT, yeah. Much brighter than your IIT students here in, in India. <laughs> but not only was he bright, but he was very devotional. He was massaging his guru, Yana Prabhupada. And unfortunately, Yadava Prakash, he was, uh, he was a Mayavadi. And he explained one word, it's called Kapi Ashan. The meaning, of the, he said, the meaning of Kapi Ashan is that the Lord, he has the, the uh, eyes like the behind of a monkey. And when when Ramanujacharya heard that, he just, oh, that just, that, that hurt. So, you know, when you cry and, the, and, it, and, and it's painful tears, they come out hot. So he was massaging and tears were coming out of the eyes of Ramanujacharya. And, and they, were, they were hot tears. They were, they were, they were, it were painful. It was, to hear him say that was painful. So Yadav Prakash said, you're disturbed? Why, why are these hot tears coming? What is it? He said, yes, this, this explanation you gave of this, of this word, uh, kapi asan, is not a proper understanding. And he was shocked 
the, the, the impotence of, of a student. Oh, and you know better? And he said, yes, the actual meaning is he who has eyes which are like lotus flowers. This is the actual meaning. And he was a little impressed that he could that he could understand that this is he he got this in the Sanskrit, so he was a little impressed. But he went on expressing his Mayavad understanding, and Ramanujacharya, being a great devotee, he would he would challenge and defeat his guru. So it became such an intense uh, exchange that eventually Yana Prakash, he decided that, that if this person isn't stopped, then he's going to bring in this, this devotion, this bhakti, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin my whole teachings here. So he decided to... to to put him to death. And he was, it was a conspiracy. He even told his students, listen, this, this uh, Ramanuja, he's, uh, he's disturbing the whole atmosphere with this, with this uh, Vaishnavism. So I think we should do away with him. And they agreed, being, you know, good students <laughs> of this rascal. So they were going to they, they take him on, they were going to go on a trip six months journey and in this journey they were going to uh, kill Ramanuja so they had gone for a couple months and uh, Yadav Prakash saw that there was a this was a good time and they were discussing how to how to do away with Ramanuja but uh, Ramanuja Acharya he had a cousin named Govinda and he heard. He was, you know, not right there with him, but he could, he was some distance away in the bushes, and he heard the conspiracy to kill his cousin Ramanuja. So he went and he told Ramanuja that this is the situation that they want to kill you because you're expressing so much Vaishnavism. They want to kill you. Big Mayavadis. Imagine. So evil. So evil that someone is speaking against what you believe and they're ready to kill him. Even though he was such a great scholar. You see how, how evil the mind can be. So when Ramanuja got this message from his, uh, from his cousin, Govinda, he decided to, to leave the party. So after some time, they started, they were looking for him. Yadav you know, Prakash and his disciples, they were looking for him, couldn't find him. And finally, they concluded that maybe some wild animal had, had killed him. So Govinda was there, so they were expressing lamentation. Oh, he must have been killed by an animal. Although inside they were thinking, oh, that's good. You know, we didn't have to kill him, but he was killed by, um, by some wild animals that they were feeling good inside. But because Govinda was there, they had expressed, they were lamenting, oh, he was probably killed by some you know, tiger or something. So then Ramanuja, he's on his journey. He's only 18 years old. He's a young, he's a young man. And he's out there and, you know, he, he's like, who knows, maybe 200 kilometers away from home in the forest. How's he going to find his way back? But he, he's dear to Krishna, so he felt some strength. Let me go. So then he met one hunter and his wife. And they asked, what are you doing? Way out here in the forest, it's dangerous, you're a young man. What? And he said, oh yeah, I'm just on pilgrimage. <laughs> you know. 
So they said, well, here, you could, you could stay with us and we'll, you know, the, we'll cook a fire and we'll get something to eat. And the next morning, he couldn't find them. And just by his intuition, he could understand that was Lakshmi and Narayan came to help him. And then he saw somebody walking by and said, hey, I'm looking for Kanchipornam. That's where he lived. You're looking for Kanchipornam? What do you mean you're looking for? You? I know you. You're, you're, Kanchipornam's just right here. Why are you asking him where is Kanchipornam? And then he understood. Lakshmi Narayan had brought him there to Kanchipuram, to his home. So he was very much appreciative that the Lord came to him to help him in a, in a very difficult situation. It's described in this, uh, there's a book about Ramanuja Acharya. And many of the pastimes of Ramanuja Acharya are there. There's one instance where there was a princess who was haunted by a ghost, a Brahmana Rakshasha ghost, and just being harassed and and no, they didn't know what to do. Then they heard about Ramanuj. Actually, they heard about Yadava Prakash, the the Gurukul teacher of uh, Ramanuja, and he was famous as someone who would exercise ghosts. They would, he would remove ghosts. So he went there to try to remove this ghost from this princess. But the ghost within the princess, he just started laughing. What good is your mantras and all your thing is going to do? I'm not going to leave this princess. Stop wasting your time. He was just laughing at Yadav Prakash. And then he said, if you want me to leave this princess, then you have to bring your first student here, your most important student, Ramanuja. Then I'll leave. So when they heard that, they said, bring, bring Ramanuja. Bring Ramanuja. So then Ramanuja came. And he told the ghost in the princess body, this is inauspicious that you're doing this, causing such a disturbance to this princess. We should leave. And the ghost in the princess body said, I'll leave, but only if you put your feet on my head. He said, okay. <laughs> So the princess put her feet, her head down, and Ramanujacharya put his feet on the head, and then the, the ghost immediately left. So she was delivered from the ghost. And then she, she got up and she said, well, what are all, why are you all around here? Like she's just woken up from a nightmare or something. Like, what is this? Oh, yeah, you, you've just been relieved of a ghost. Ramanuja has just relieved a ghost from you. And she became very shy and she ran away. So this is the, some of the greatness of Ramanujacharya. He uh, had one, another teacher. His name was Kanchipurna. Kanchipurna was a great devotee of Krishna. Great devotee of Krishna. He was a sudra, though, and was not very much respected amongst the Brahmana community. But Ramanujacharya, he was a great devotee, so he knew, he knew the greatness of this Kanchipurna. So he would accept instructions from him. He accepted him as his teacher, as his guru cool teacher, because he had rejected Yadava Prakash because he's a Mayavadi. Why would I want to be around such a person? 
So, but Kanchipurna was a great devotee. So he was very happy to accept him as his as his teacher. So there's one point where uh, Brahmanujachari he invited him for lunch at his home. But he told him that I won't be there when you first get there, but I'm coming. So uh, Kachipurna went there to his home. His wife was there. So he had to wait some time, but then he, but then he told his wife, but I have service to do. I have service to do at, at, at the temple, so I can't wait. So that, please, serve Prashadam, and, and I'll have to go. I, I can't wait so long. So she did that. She served in Prashadam, and then he left. There was some Prashadam left. But he, he, she gave the prasadam, the remnants of Kachipurna, to a sudra lady that was going nearby. So Ramanujacharya returned home and asked, oh, was, was Kachipurna here? He said, yes, yes, he was here. I served in prasadam. He had to do some service, so he, he couldn't stay, so he left. Oh, and is there any remnants left? Did he leave any remnants? She said, yes, he did, but I, I gave it to some Sudra lady that was walking by. And he said, you foolish woman. You foolish woman. I wanted those remnants. <laughs> that was one of the reasons he invited him. I wanted to get the remnants, right? Prabhupada says there's three things that are very powerful in this world. Remnants left by the pure devotee. The dust from the feet of the pure devotee. And the water that has washed the feet of the pure. These, amazing, these are the three very powerful things in this world, all related to the pure devotee. You can get the dust the feet of the pure devotee, the water that washes feet, or the remnants of food, then you're doing real good. <laughs> so he knew the value of, uh, of the remnants of the pure devotee. There was another instance where another great devotee had come to Kachipuram and his purpose in, in being there was to bring Ramun, uh, Ramanujacharya to Sri Rangam. Because Yamunacharya, who was also the guru of Ramanujacharya, he had left his body. And he was the leader of the Sri Rangam temple. You know, the Sri Rangam temple is a huge, still, it's a huge, complex, big temple. But they needed an Acharya. So they decided, they had a, a GBC meeting, and they decided the best person would be Ramanujacharya. So they, uh, they uh, asked this one devotee, let me see if I could, uh, let's see if I could find it here. They asked Mahapurush, a great devotee there in Sri Rangam temple, to go to Kanchipuram and teach Ramanujacharya, because he's still a young man. And uh, this Mahapurusha, he was one of the great devotees of Jamunacharya. So they, they said, you go there, you give some instructions, and then after one year, bring him to Shirangam. But don't tell him the plan. But Mahapurusha... He was a great devotee also, very nice, wonderful devotee, and Ramanujacharya very much appreciated his association and his teachings. 
So there's one point where the uh, the wife of Mahapurusha, she, she was getting some water from a from a well. At the same time, uh, Ramanujacharya's wife was there getting water from the well. And some of the water from, from Mahapurusha's bucket went into her bucket. And she started chastising her. You foolish woman. Why have you allowed drops of your bucket to enter? Now it's ruined. Your sudra. And she was, she was really into this... Uh, uh, seniority, you know, lower and senior. So she felt very bad that she was chastised by Ramanujacharya's wife in this way. So she, that night she went and she told her husband, Mahapurusha, of the incident. And he said, I think, I think Ranganath wants us to go back to Sri Rangam. He took that as Krishna's mercy. So that night they left. And when when uh, Ramanujacharya went back to his home, he asked, oh, where is Mahapurusha and his wife? Oh, I don't know. And then he found out from the neighbors that he had left. He had gone back to Sri Rangam. So when he heard that, he went back to his wife and and, and he asked, what, what, what happened? They were here, living here nicely, and, and now they've left? And then he explained, she explained to him the incident of the, with the water, that some, some of water from her bucket had gotten into her bucket, and then she chastised her. And he became so upset. At that point, he decided to take sannyas. Actually, no, there was one other instance where a, a brahmana went to her and asked for, for some prasadam. He was you know, skinny and hungry, and, and she wouldn't give it. And she chastised him also, get, you know, get away from here, you beggar. You know, she was kind of low class. You know. So Ramanujacharya saw this brahmana and said, oh, you, you look very thin. Would you like some prasad? He said, well, I was just at your place, and your wife, she chastised me. Yeah, and, and Ramanuja just thought, oh, this is too much. And he said, I'll tell you how you're going to get some nice, nice prasad from her. I'm going to give you a letter. And this letter, I want you to tell her that this letter is from her father to me. So you give this letter to her. It's from her father. She'll be very happy and she'll give you nice, sumptuous prasad. And he said, all right. So he brought this letter to her. And she's so happy. Oh, a letter from my father. But it's not to her, it's to her husband, Namanu Jacharya. So she said, oh, please, come, come, come. Let me, let me feed you. So she fed him nice prasad. He was very happy. And then Ramanuja came. And she gave the letter. This is from my father to you. And he read the letter. And it's a letter saying that, that, her father wants her to go to their home many, many kilometers away because her relative is being married, her sister. So tell her to come. And if you could come also, please come. So Ramanuja, of course, this is not happening. It's not true. He just wanted her out of there. <laughs> so Ramanuja said, I can't go, but you can go. And this Brahmana, he'll escort you. So this way, she left Kanchipuram, and he took sannyas. And he got the name Yatiraj. That was his sannyas name. Yatiraj. So this is how he became a sannyasi. So... Let me see if I could uh, find anything else here that, that you may find interesting. 
Well, there is a, a, an instance where the mother of Yadava Prakash, you know, Yadava Prakash, he was his first Gurukul teacher, Mayavari, but his mother would see Ramanujacharya and she was just so impressed just by his, by his effulgence and, and by his scholarship. So he told her son, Yadava Prakash, you should take shelter of Ramanujacharya. Another thing is, is Yadav Prakash, he wasn't feeling very happy. He was feeling miserable. Why? Why do you think he was feeling miserable? Because he had offended Ramanujacharya and also because he's a Mayavadi. And Mayavadi is that's not, it's not a very enlivening life. Impersonalism. Right. So she told him, You should take shelter. You want to be happy? You've offended a great devotee. So you should take shelter of him. And you know, he was he's the teacher. He was the teacher. So to become a, a, a disciple of a of a disciple, that's like that's pretty hard on the false ego. Right. So He had a dream that night that he could he should take shelter of Ramanujacharya. So that day, the next day, he went to Ramanujacharya, and he he wanted to have some discussion about Vaishnavism and impersonalism. So Ramanujacharya didn't even speak to him about this. He asked his disciple one of his senior disciples, you explain to him. And he explained to him so nicely the, the uh, superiority of Vaishnavism that Yadava Prakash, he paid dandavats to Ramanujacharya and begged for forgiveness for his offenses to him. And he became a devotee. Actually, uh, uh, Ramanujacharya gave him sannyas. So he became a sannyasi and he became a disciple of Ramanujacharya. So there's an instance also where uh, Purna Pragya, he told him that you should go to another great Acharya His name is, uh, let me see here, Gostipurna. And from Gostipurna, you can receive a secret Vaishnava mantra. Very, very powerful mantra. So you should go to him and beg for this mantra. So he went to him. He wouldn't give it. Again and again he went to receive this mantra but he wouldn't he wouldn't get it and he said to receive this mantra one has to be very pure very exalted he wouldn't give it 18 times he went to him to receive this mantra Finally, one devotee went to him and said, you know this Ramanujacharya? He's a very special devotee. You should give this mantra because he's feeling very dejected. He's feeling very bad that you're not giving this mantra. So finally, he softened up. And the next time Ramanuja came, he said, okay. Because you're so sincere, you're so desirous, of this very powerful secret Vaishnava mantra, I'll give it to you. But don't give it to anyone else. It's a very powerful mantra. It gives liberation from birth and death. So don't give it to anybody. It's only for very pure, selected few. So you can imagine, after 18 times, finally, 19 times, it's the 19th time, Finally, he received the mantra. 
Om Namo Narayanaya. This is the mantra. Om Namo Narayanaya. So he was so happy. I've got the mantra. But this mantra is so powerful. It could liberate anyone. So he, being the pure devotee that he was, he is described that he went on the wall of the temple that, that's, you know, surrounding the temple. And he got up and he started shouting, Everybody, please come. Come, I have good news. Good news for you. And, you know, he's very pure. And you know, so people were coming and people were coming. Big crowd came. I'm going to give you a mantra that will liberate you from repeated birth and death. You'll go back to Godhead. Listen carefully. And they're all, whoa. Om Namo Narayanaya. Om Namo Narayanaya. And they were just, they were looking at each other. Oh, very nice. Now we have this wonderful mantra. Then we're going to be liberated. And news got out. And then the guru found out that I'd just given it to him. And Ramanuja promised he wasn't going to give it out. And then Ramanuja, he went straight to, his, to this guru. And he said, I don't want to see your face. Just by seeing your face, I become contaminated. I gave you this mantra. You said you wouldn't say it to anyone. Now you're giving it out to everybody. Now you're going to go to hell. And he said, Ramanuja you just said, if I go to hell, I won't mind. But now, so many people are going to be liberated because of chanting this very powerful Vaisnava secret mantra. So when the guru heard this, he was shocked. He was shocked. And he embraced him. He said, you are my guru. I am your disciple. I'm amazed. He said, I'm amazed about your compassion, your sincerity. You are my guru. And he paid obeisances. But Ramanuja paid obeisances to him, so they're paying obeisances to each other. <laughs> which is very common. <laughs> so this is Ramanujacharya, great, 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 great Vaishnava. You know, we also have this uh, movement still in the world where you know, they have a secret mantra and you pay for it. In the West, this is a, it was a big thing in the, in the West. It's, it's called the Transcendental Meditation. And you pay some Money, and they give you a secret mantra. I got the secret mantra too. But it was useless. Two syllable, two syllable mantra. It cost me $120. And this is back in 1977. Now, and that's a lot more money. That's, I don't know, maybe $500 or something. But it was a useless mantra. Anga. Anga. And the person giving the mantra to me, lady, she was so nervous. She was making me nervous. And I'm thinking, what kind of a teacher is this? You know, she's completely nervous. You know? <laughs> Maybe she was she was new, a new new guru or something. I don't know. <laughs> So Prabhupada said, no, this is cheating. Just like here in India, you know, you don't buy mantras, right? You don't sell mantras. Prabhupada said, if I wanted, I could have also become very wealthy. In the Hare Krishna mantra, 32 syllables. I could have made so much money. But he said, I have not come here to cheat you. But I've come here to give, to give, and to give. That's Prabhupada. He gave his life for us. Yeah. There's so many nice temples. It's like every few weeks another temple is coming up, you yeah? know. 
It's like soon there's going to be another temple coming up in New Delhi. Big temple again. It's amazing. They have 17 temples there now. Unbelievable. This is Prabhupada's mercy all over the world. And we have 600 temples all over the world. Yeah, this is Prabhupada. So many books. Over half a billion books have been distributed. Why? Because Prabhupada wanted everybody to hear about Krishna. The glories of Krishna. The name Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare, Hare. And this is the Maha Mantra. This is even giving more liberation. You can go to Goloka Vrindavan, spiritual world, by chanting this mantra. So Prabhupada is even more merciful than Ramanujacharya because he gave the, the great Maha Mantra. Kaler Doshanad He Rajan Asti He Kumahadguna Kirnei Deva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangha Paramita. This age of Kali has many faults. Unlimited faults. Wherever you look, there's so many faults. There's no good leaders. Of course, here at least you have one that's he's much better than we've had in the past. Modi, you yeah, know, isn't it? He's a devotee, very favorable to Iskon. We have another one also, I think here. Leader, I forgot his name. Yogi, wasn't there some yogi? Yogi Aditya? Not. Yeah, another. Very nice. At least in India we have some good leaders. But throughout the world, practically, it's terrible. So, so many faults in this age. But the one good quality, simply by chanting Hare Krishna, we can become completely purified and go back to Godhead. I was speaking to one student at a university many, many years ago. I was explaining to him how in this age there's many faults. Wherever you go, so many faults. He said, oh yeah, you won't believe what I just read in the newspaper. There was one psychiatrist who was treating a, a patient with split personalities. He had about six different split personalities. So this psychiatrist, he had a brilliant idea because this person, this patient, he was a wealthy person. So he decided to charge each of the six split personalities. Not one, six. <laughs> so this patient had enough intelligence to take this psychiatrist to court and when the judge heard what he was doing he couldn't believe it such cheating so he took the 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 medical license away from this psychiatrist and he had to go to jail for two years you would think that a medical practitioner would be you know honest right there's a lot of medical practitioners out there that are big cheaters. As Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, this world is made up of the cheaters and the cheated. So we're fortunate. We didn't get cheated by Prabhupada. He gave us Krishna. So much cheating. I was, I was giving a, a class, Srimad Bhagavatam class, here in India. Uh, uh, I forgot the name of the city. Uh, anyway, I'm giving class, and believe it or not, Krishna walks into the class. Blue, peacock feather, you know, yellow garments, look, you know, good imitation. But he's a cheater, thinking he's Krishna. You know, most people don't go that far to dress like Krishna. But this person, he, went just, he just went all the way. Colored his skin, 
you know, the whole thing, you know. Cheaters. Prabhupada said there's so many uh, countries that are doing export business. India also has their export business. And that is every couple months or so, another god is being, you know, exported. Like I was distributing books one time in the, in the airport. And uh, I asked one person, we were talking, so I asked him, so what kind of work do you do? He said, well, I, I'm God. I said, oh, big position you have there. And I said, well, you know, one of the symptoms or characteristics, characteristics of God is he knows everything. Can you tell me what I'm thinking? He said, yes. You're thinking, I'm a rascal. <laughs> I said, very good, you're right. <laughs> but I was also thinking of a number. Can you tell me the number? No. So cheaters. Cheaters and the cheated. So we're fortunate. We have the the real, pure knowledge. Therefore, Prabhupada called our Bhagavad Gita as it is. So many Bhagavad Gitas. Thousands, nine, nine thousand. Prabhupada said there's about 600 different translations of the Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita as it is. And all the other Bhagavad Gitas can be called Bhagavad Gita as it isn't. Because it's not the real thing. Just like there's one scholar, he he was translating this verse, Sarvadamam Pratyaja, Mamikam Sarnambaja. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender to me. I'll free you from all sinful reaction, reactions. Do not fear. So in the commentary of this uh, so-called scholar, he says, Krishna is asking for too much. Asking him for too much. He doesn't know that if we surrender to Krishna, Krishna gives himself. So we come out doing very good to achieve Krishna. That's the best. That's the goal of the human form of life, to achieve Krishna. So if we surrender to Krishna, we'll achieve Krishna. Now go back home. So, on that note, is there any question or comment? Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Many times, yesterday I was meeting one youngster. I just wanted to take his number, contact number for inviting for programs. He said, I, I tried to be friendly with him openly, initially. You tried what? You tried what? <laughs> okay. I was trying to be friendly with yeah. him initially. Then uh, he understood my intention and he said, Oh, I'm not interested. What you are trying to preach, I know what you are trying to preach. I'm not interested. Some people are very much matured nowadays. They understand what our intentions are, even before we express. So, how to deal with them, how to get in touch with them, help them again. Okay. Yeah, I, I also, I met one person on book distribution, and I was showing the book to him, presented it to him, and, and asked for donation. He said, no, no, I'm not interested, because I want to get married. He could understand that if I follow this, I'm going to want to be a celibate for the rest of my life. But I don't want, I want to get married. I said, no, 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 it's okay. You could follow this and also get married. It's okay. He said, no, I don't want to take a chance. <laughs> so, some people aren't interested. Yesterday I was distributing books 
at the New Delhi airport on my way here. And this person, he said, I was showing it to him, he said, no, I don't like this. So that's the problem in the material world. People, they, they come, they, they don't want to serve Krishna. They want to be Krishna, like this person I saw, you know, dressed like Krishna. He wants to be Krishna. They want to be the enjoyers. They want to be the proprietors. So to find a, someone that's interested, to find someone interested, that's the rare thing, right? Because people are interested in trying to be the enjoyer, the proprietor. Of course, we, the best thing we could do, we pray to Krishna. Krishna, please, give me sincerity so I can convince these people to take this knowledge. Book distribution is all about prayer. A lot of prayer. <laughs> and man proposes, God disposes. Yeah. So we had to pray. And Krishna will send nice people. Yesterday also I met a nice person that was distributing this book, Easy Journey to Other Planets. And I told him, you know, there's so many problems in this world. He said, yeah, I know. I'm having a lot of problems. <laughs> I said, well, this book will solve all your problems. Because if you follow the teachings in this book, you go to the spiritual world where there's no death, no old age, no disease, no anxiety. Everything is good. He said, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> so, yeah, the spiritual world, no problem. No cheating. No anxiety. It's like nobody wants to uh, die. We don't want to die. Right? We don't want to get old. It's like now they have so many ways to try to avoid old age. Now they have this, uh, they, they take these shots to remove wrinkles. Right? And they have people, they, they dye their hair. Yeah. They get gray hair. They don't want gray hair. You know? Nobody wants, they, don't want, they don't want to look old. And now they have hair implant. Right? You can get hair implants. <laughs> so your hair grows back again. When I joined the movement 46 years ago, my Sika is where it was supposed to be. Up here. Right? But as the ages go on, it started sliding down. <laughs> and now my Sika is way down here. This is called the Senior Citizen Sika. <laughs> and it'll happen to you too. <laughs> as Prabhupada many times said, it'll happen to you too. So many devotees are leaving their body now. In Vrindavan, in Mayapur, and so auspicious. Devotees are going back home. So that's our future. Back home. Back to Godhead. Prabhupada said, we don't go immediately back to the spiritual world. We go to a place where Krishna is performing his pastimes somewhere in the universe. And there we get trained up on how to live with Krishna. And then we go back home. Haribo. Thank you very much, Prof. Okay. Anything else? There are a few minutes left. Yes, we have a question here. Uh, Hare Krishna, Prof. Like many times we heard your glories regarding book distribution. So, could you give us some guidance how we can improve our book distribution scores and our, uh, what is the proper consciousness for book distribution? Well, I could tell you what Prabhupada said about book distribution. He said, if you want to be successful in book distribution, chant your 16 rounds uninterrupted. Now, of course, if you chant eight rounds before Mangalartik, you chant eight rounds after Mangalartik. That's also uninterrupted because Mangalartik is also chanting. We're absorbed in Krishna and Prabhupada. And, but actually, Prabhupada said the best time to chant your 16 rounds is before Mangalartik. Of course, not 
everybody can do that. It means you got to take rest early, get up early. But it's so nice because then after Mangalartik, you read Bhagavad Gita, you read Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, and then you're, you're, you're inspired. We get inspiration to distribute books from Krishna. That means good rounds, good attentive rounds, and reading. We got to read Bhagavad Gita. You got to read Srimad Bhagavatam. This gives inspiration to distribute books. Hmm? Prabhupada said that when we go out to preach, we're declaring war on the material energy. And Maya is very powerful. You may have noticed. Yeah? Very powerful. So, we had to be prepared. And preparation means good sadhana. That means we're ready to go to battle against Maya. Good sadhana. Just like imagine, you know, during the battle of Hila Kurukshetra 5,000 years ago, they were all powerful kshatriyas. They had their weapons and they had their shield and they were, they were ready ready for battle, powerful kshatriyas. So imagine one guy comes out there and he's only wearing a gumsha. What hope, huh? Finished. No. So if we try to go out on book distribution, we don't have good sadhana, we don't have good rounds, we don't have, we're not reading Prabhupada's books. It's like going out there and we're just wearing, wearing a gumsha. No. We had to be prepared. Okay? Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna.